Hi and welcome to Tranquil Living. This is DL and today we're going to do a short restorative practice for the hips. But before we get going, I have an announcement to make. Uh, let's go ahead and get comfortable. I'd like to invite you to participate in a new course that I have redesigned for the internet so that more of you can participate. It's a yoga for absolute beginners course. And having said that, it doesn't matter if you are a well-established yogi or someone who's just starting out. This class is bound to offer you something because it's very unique. It's a course that, as far as beginners are concerned, was designed to help you be comfortable in any class that you might take and become the authority of your own body. For those who are more experienced, it provides you with perhaps some foundational elements that you're not even aware of yet as a yogi, and also will provide you with a self-inquiry to deepen your practice. The course isn't just about postural practice, it's also about learning how to modify poses for you and your body. It's about using props to the best of their purpose. It's about pranayama, mindfulness, and fundamentals of movement to help you understand your body and how it works. Now some portions of this course are going to be offered for free on YouTube, but if you would like to take part in the full course, it'll be available on dlcsgo.com starting in 2021. Okay, so let's get on now with our restorative practice for the hips. So um, first of all, please get comfortable in your space, so whatever you need uh, in terms of props. I would recommend having perhaps some blocks or a bolster, cushions or blankets, because we're going to be doing some yin type holds and it might be really nice to have that extra support. So why don't you join me on your back with your knees bent in constructive rest. So taking whatever time you need to adjust and release the body to the ground, having your hands perhaps on your belly or just open alongside your body. Give yourself time to settle in, to feel gravity helping you release long-held contractions. Find the fullness of your breath and soften your body. Now I'm going to invite you, if you'd like to join me, to putting the soles of your feet together and letting your knees open out to the sides. We're in a reclined cobbler here. Now this is a place where it might be really nice to have some blocks. And if you feel as though your knees are hanging off the weight of your hips, you can simply support underneath the thighs with the blocks. And it just helps so you don't feel as though you're pulling so much uh, through the tissues of the legs. So once again, once you get settled, feeling the surface of the feet, one to the other, kissing lightly. Feeling that opening through the front of the hips. Maybe a softening of the belly deepening as you release. Let go of tension in the jaw and face. All around the eyes. Breathing, relaxing, letting go. Just 
Just check, make sure that you're not jutting your chin back towards the wall behind you, nor tucking in and shortening the length of the front of the neck. Nice, neutral neck and spine. Feel the rise and fall of the belly with each breath. Surrendering more and more to gravity's pull. And when you're ready, if you're ready, <laughs> you can stay as you are or join me in extending the legs one at a time. Just feeling that length again through the front of the thigh as you open the legs. We're going to take in the left knee towards the chest. You can hold on either under or over the leg and just allow that knee to draw in towards the chest. Try not to raise the hip towards the ear, but keep it level with the extended leg hip. Now here, you're welcome to point and flex your feet, make circles, anything that feels good, or you can simply hold. Give time to the lower back to soften and release. And as the body yields, you can maybe bring the knee a little closer. But don't push or pull anything. Be at ease and peace. Feel free if you would like to allow that hip joint to open externally. And then bringing it back to the center. And if you'd like, bringing it slightly across the body without rolling to the side. Keep the back planted to the ground. And then back to neutral. One more squeeze and extend that leg long. Just, just taking a moment to feel maybe the difference between the two sides. Bringing in the other knee towards the chest. And noticing any difference, maybe it's easier or harder on this side. Again, just allow the softening to occur, adding perhaps the pointing and flexing of the feet or circling of the ankles, if you wish. Check in with your breath, make sure it's easy, flowing, freely. Allow the shoulders to drop back towards the ground.
And then if you'd like, you can open the hip out to the side, just bringing the knee off. Keeping both hips on the ground. Back to center. And then crossing the midline without picking the back up or rolling that hip. So we're not trying to go, you know, into a twist here. Pulling that knee back in towards the midline and closer to the chest if it's invited. And then extend that leg long. Let's take a long body stretch here, wrapping the tissues around the bones of the body nice and tight as we stretch tight. And then releasing everything, drawing back towards the core. Deep, deep breath, hold, and release. Very good. Okay, so let's go ahead and come to our sides, pushing ourselves up. Now here's where you might want to bolster a cushion or pillow. We're going to do some forward folds. Now, uh, this will likely be different for everyone. So you can either bring the sole of the foot to meet the upper thigh, inner upper thigh. If, um, if that's comfortable or feels, you know, very easy, then you might want to cross the foot onto the thigh at the hip crease. And if that feels like too much, you can also just cross the foot right over, let me turn this way, right over your thigh and just let your foot relax. So any of those three are perfectly fine. So I'm gonna take my foot into my groin. Now here, if your knee's quite above the ground, then you might wanna put a uh, a block just to support that knee. Have your other knee facing straight up towards the ceiling and your toes pulled back. You might already be feeling this quite deeply, so you don't need to do anything else. If you want to go into something a little deeper and you're not feeling enough yet, then just start to walk the hands down the leg. And remember that this isn't a back stretch. So if you're feeling it in your back, go ahead and just release. We want to get it in to the leg. And we do that by tilting the pelvis um, down as if emptying out towards the leg. Now here, if you would like, you can use the bolster in any way. So you can just kind of release. And in fact, I think I want another block on my forehead. So in whatever position you are, just see if you can find a relaxed place, letting your limbs go, letting your head go, and breathe.
Give more and more of your body to your supports. Notice where the breath is feeling restricted or restrained and see if you can breathe into those places. Slowly bringing yourself back up. Moving your props out of the way. Let's extend the leg that was bent out in front and just give a jiggle and a shake and maybe a rocking from side to side. And take a moment to feel the effects on that side of the body and how it might be different from the other side. You might notice one leg feels very long. Maybe one feels softer, more released towards the ground. And then we'll go to the other side. Now, you might have to adjust the way that you had your leg crossed on this other side depending on how your hips are on this side of the body your hip is so um, expect that so i'm going to again um, yeah see on this side i can't really bring my foot into the hip crease very comfortably so i'm going to do the crossover with the top of the foot kind of uh, just relaxing onto the floor so i won't need my block And just release however you would like to towards your supports. And do make adjustments. You know, it's really important to get yourself comfortable so that you can remain and deepen. And you might find as your body lets go that things adjust all on their own. You might have to shift as well, consciously. And let those shifts happen. Don't hold things tight. Find your breath here and deepen it if you can. And now that my body is beginning to soften, I feel as though I want to bring that foot into the hip crease now. So I'm going to adjust myself. You can stay as you are or you can shift as well. <sighs> we'll just be here for another 30 seconds or so.
Releasing more and more into your supports. Even if you feel as though you've released completely, you might be surprised to find that there is another layer there available to you. Slowly bring yourself back upright and move your props out of the way. Extend the bent leg and give a shake and or a rock. And we'll come on to all fours. So we won't be here very long. We're just going to take one knee through the hands and stand on the foot. Doesn't matter if it's right or left for you. I'm starting with my left. If you need your blocks to make yourself more comfortable, feel free to use those. Otherwise, hands on the floor or fists, whatever works. So allow that back hip to drop through and down towards the ground. You might enjoy having your toes back and feel that a little bit of a pull through the thigh tissue, or you can have the foot flat. Just breathe. Make sure that your spine is long here. Tendency I see a lot is that people tend to round through the spine. If you're doing this, that's when you need the blocks or maybe come up to your knee so that you're not curving through the spine. You want the spine nice and long, the crown of the head reaching forward. For those of you who are really flexible, feel free to come down onto your forms if you like. And if you would like, you can also just tuck your heel in towards your buttocks. And you can also twist to look slightly behind you in both directions. Just try to get a glimpse of that heel. And then release and take that leg back, tuck it under. We'll go to the other side. So stepping the other leg forward. Again, the side might be very different, so you might find a neat box here. Letting the back hip drop towards the floor. Toes bent back for a little change of sensation, or flat, or both, <laughs> back and forth. Those of you who want to come down to the forearms, just do so after you feel released completely in this portion of the stretch. Long spine, crown of the head, reaching into the space in front of you. And then if you desire, taking that heel in towards the buttocks. And just giving a little turn to look back towards that heel, both directions, both sides. And deep breath, release the leg back. 
Okay, and just taking a moment, if you need to do any cat-cow, if you'd like to take a child's pose, this would be a good place to do that. You might also find that you would like to stretch that leg each leg back behind you, so feel free to do that instead if that feels more nourishing. And then from the all fours position, slide the left leg forward and through the hands. Now, you can keep the foot fairly close um, to your body if that is comfortable for you. If, you're po if it's possible for you to bring that foot further away and open, but still remain up, feel free. I don't do that. <laughs> so I keep my foot pretty close in. The other thing that you can do is if you find, I'm going to turn this way for a moment, if you find <clears throat> that you have a lot of space between your buttocks and the floor, this is a really good place to put a block so that you can rest that hip as if on the floor. And um, while I'm here, let's just go ahead and go on to the forearms, if that's comfortable. And then if you can come all the way down, that's fine. And then if you need some sort of prop in front of you um, or to hug, this can be really nice too. So just relax here in your uh, pigeon. Again, with each breath, see what you can release. See how much deeper you can surrender to gravity. If you would like to bring again that heel towards the buttocks, the heel of the extended leg. And if you would like, you can push your upper body upward to meet that leg. And then release. Let's move props out of the way and we'll go to the other side. So back into all fours, taking the other leg through the arms, again placing that leg wherever you need to be comfortable, making sure that you're up and not sitting on that hip. Go ahead and use a block if you have a lot of space between your hip and the floor. 
And I think I do want you to see that side, so we're going to... a moment you can bend the toes back kind of reach through the heel anything that feels good before you begin to come down as far as is comfortable for you having props at the ready so you can relax mm. Free to make sounds. If you would like to bring the heel in towards the buttocks. And if you'd like to use your hands to bring your upper body to meet the heel. When I was younger, I could meet my heel. <laughs> Not so much anymore. And release that foot. Let's sit in a cross leg position now, facing forward. And take a moment of meditation, closing your eyes, just feeling the sensations that you might be aware of moving through the hips and the legs. Deep breath. Release. Again, deep breath. This time, hold the breath. Pull up on Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, Jahala Bandha. And release. That ends this practice, but I suggest that you take three to six minutes of Shavasana on your own. Thanks for joining me for today's practice. Have a tranquil day. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit the notification button so you receive when I drop new videos here on this channel. Thank you.